the older one gets, the more entrenched their beliefs are and the tougher it is for people to access their subconscious and sort through the noise. Hi there, my name is James and thank you so much to check out my podcast, Dad Mind Matters, helping men to safely navigate family life without losing their minds. I'm lucky enough to be joined by life coach Kevin, who specialises in supporting teenagers to set goals and break through limiting beliefs. My name is Kevin, and I'm a certified professional life coach for teens and tweens. And I like to specialise in helping kiddos get over limiting beliefs and things that are holding them back in life because of different inputs that they've had over those very important years of growing up until the age of 12 when they get inputs from parents and teachers and preachers and, and all sorts of different inputs that may have shaped their perception of reality. I find great fulfillment in helping and talking through issues and problems that they have, things that they, they've yet to get over and seeing the light bulb go on. Once we start asking those questions, what if you thought about it this way? Or what would it be like if you could do this? We set goals and we, we set action items to, to achieve those goals. And it's so rewarding uh, for me to do that. And I'm very excited to, to have the opportunity to have a really positive impact uh, on as many people as possible while doing this. Yeah, it's a really good perspective. And I hadn't even thought about that until you just said it, but self-development is not just for adults and people who might find themselves at, at a bit of a crossroads in their life, a bit of midlife crisis. It makes a lot of sense that actually if you can teach children, young adults, teenagers, how to set goals, like accountability for their life, you've set them off in the right direction. To an extent, the later you start that, the harder it is because people already have entrenched beliefs, potentially limiting beliefs. To your point that the older one gets, the more entrenched their beliefs are and the tougher it is for people to, to access their subconscious and sort through the noise, uh, that happens just on a day-to-day -day basis, just trying to, to quiet that noise and dig into really what is their vision? What does that person want and how are we going to get there? So it's easier actually to work, to shape those thoughts when people are younger, in my opinion. I think children can have a very good relationship with an aunt, aunt, aunt or uncle or a sports coach or a grandparent, because you're not, I think sometimes as parents, we're so terrified of anything bad happening that actually that probably does warp your sense of what you tell them. I think that's a danger. It's much easier coming from another adult because they're like, well, they haven't got an agenda. This is just a nice right. man saying, don't do that. Or that's the thought, well, maybe doing that a different way or. Yeah, um, exactly another adult human with a fully formed uh, frontal cortex yeah. to, <laughs> to help them reason through things, come up with some ideas and help them find their path. You've got three children yourself. <laughs> you've earned your stripes. You've, you've got all the probably worries and concerns that the people that you work with. You oh, know? yeah. I've got all the same. And you're right. It's hard to help their kiddos in that regard because the kiddos see them as their parent. And as a parent, we have all these thoughts and beliefs and, and fears about what if all these things could happen. And really the way we've learned how to become parents is by the way our parents parented us. And we got all that input with, between the ages of one and probably 12. And that's our vision of parenting. And we learned that at a very young age. And our parents learned that from their parents. So it's like this generational parenting method that's been passed down over the years. And kiddos in 2024 are a lot different than kiddos in 1980. Oh, and yeah. so it's, it's a whole new world. So a lot of the times I find parents need to throw out all the expectations about what your kid is going to grow up to be or do. Be there as a guide to answer questions and ask questions and be there when they need you, but let them figure it out. Let them make mistakes. And that's the part about building self-confidence and building that self-concept. When you give your kiddo the freedom and the ability to make a choice uh, that they have to process that whole thing. It's like, okay, well, I could do this or I could do this. And let me just play that tape forward and, and think about what the results and the consequences are, of both of those choices. This one's gonna be better. What happens if I make a mistake? And learning that, okay, if you make the wrong choice and make a mistake, it's still going to be okay. And next time you learn now that you need to make the other choice. Yeah. You need to do the other thing, but let them fail because that, that builds the grit and that builds the resilience 
And that's what they need to get through life because some days are hard. I think you know, some days are really hard. I think it's interesting yeah. to kind of, we all know the cool kids or the attractive kids at high school who had it easy and then never really developed beyond that because they were, they got used to thinking that the world was just this easy. It, the guys I know who, who are, who are multimillionaires now had a really tough time at school. They grew up mm -hmm. and early on in life, they thought life's not fair. Life's hard. Life is, and probably that gives you a drive and a gear of reality. So actually you realize, right, if I, if I want to, if I want to get the things I want to get, I got to work. It's a muscle you know? that you build up. It's like going to the gym, but for mental strength and resilience. And the more adversity you're faced with and the more you overcome it, the better you get at dealing with that sort of stuff. One of my proudest memories of childhood were actually, I think one summer, one summer holiday, because I was quite a chubby kid, quite overweight kid. And I remember just getting so hacked off with being, A, feeling just uncomfortable in my clothes and feeling fat. I remember one summer holiday, and we had like a six week summer holiday. Every day I, I started with literally just running around the garden for five, 10 minutes. And I think I lost yeah. two and a half stone in the summer holiday. And I must have been 11. That, that was a major turning point for me. That made me think, actually, it's totally possible. I'm not saying this to blow my trumpet. It's just, I think the sooner you can teach children, actually, take some accountability it's going to help them in life make them just think that actually the life isn't happening to me it's happening for me i could kind of mold this into what i want you can control it yeah and, and actually it all starts with this if you can think it you can make it happen and, and all it takes is the right mindset because if you have a if your kiddo has the thought that i can't do this i'm not good enough how does that make them feel it makes them feel bad and then what actions do they take they don't do anything or they slug through it and they just have a bad experience and it makes them feel even worse. And then it's tougher to have a positive result. But if they have the thought that actually I can do this and with practice, I can be good enough, then they feel good about it. They feel positive. They feel hopeful and empowered. And then they take action to try and get it done. They start running around the garden, but they can do this. That's probably what you experienced is you shifted your mindset from, oh, I can't do this, or I don't want to do this to actually, if I do this, I can be successful. Having that change at, at the age of 11, if you can change your mindset to, to think positively and think not, I can't do this, but how can I do this? Then that just sets your life on a totally different trajectory of positivity and success. I think roles like your role is that to me is, is progression. That role wasn't available to me when I was 10 or 11. And I think that's a shame because I'm sure that there will be teenagers, young adults that work with you who just have a, a more positive attitude than they would do if they were le left unattended. I think that's what society really needs. So there's no such thing as a normal family now. Your role models might not necessarily be your parents, and I think that's okay. That was one of the things I was just chatting with somebody the other day. They're like, what's your why? Why are you doing this? And my answer was, it's a lot of it is about personal growth for me too because I have three kids and I want to be the best parent I can be. And I want to have positive impact on as many people as possible because it makes me feel good. But she came back to me and said, you know what? I think your why is because you had mentors growing up because I was lucky enough to get involved with not only sports as, at a young age, but theater and stage production and student activities council yeah. things. And these all came with these great mentors. The, the, the teacher or the, the person responsible for managing all the, the kids involved gave me an outlet beyond my parents to bounce ideas off yeah. and other really positive people in my life that helped me have all these great experiences and accomplish all these things in my life. So I think that is my why, and I'm happy to be that person for as many people as I can be because it made such a difference in my life and helped me be happy. I struggled academically at school, but the one thing that really resonated was theatre. And I think that's a fantastic area where if you do, if you're not academic if you, and for whatever reason, you struggle to concentrate in class, theatre, that can go anywhere. And actually the life skills you're going to get just by confidence, public speaking. Last week, we had my daughter's end of year play. And the, a lot of the kids in, in her class are often quite quiet, often quite reserved. But it was so beautiful to see a group of 
it was quite moving to see 50 you know, young adults who are about to embark on their high school being so supportive of each other and they just didn't want it to end we had encore after encore and i just it reminded me actually my happiest days at school were being in a play because you get the buzz of the kind of the fear of, of performing in front of people and i'm pretty sure that gives you a massive amount of skills and when and you, if you don't have them before it's such a great way to tackle not only the fear of being in front of people but working with the team like you said and whether it's singing or reciting lines or building sets or yeah. figuring out the wiring for the sound or the lights. There's so many opportunities in that setting to grow and getting out of your comfort zone and doing something like that is, is huge. I think anyone can be involved in the theater. It's a lot more open. It's a lot more tolerant. Mm -hmm. Whereas a, yeah, you know, to everybody. an extent yeah. to play, I don't know what the key sport would have been in your high school, but for us, all the guys wanted to be playing the first 15 for the rugby. That was the pinnacle. And that's only 15 guys. There's probably mm -hmm. 500 guys, but you can have that feeling of kind of celebrity status in your school by being in a play that the feeling you get, I think at the end of a play, when you're being clapped by your contemporaries and your parents and your friends, I think that's unrivaled. I really do. Yeah. You're putting your art out there, putting your emotions and, and everything on the line. And then to get that sort of positive feedback, it makes you want to do it again. Yeah. And, and people just keep going and striving to be better on it. And, and I think that's. It changed my life getting involved with the theater. I, mean, I think there's, there'll be a lot of people who lend themselves to things like YouTube or podcasting because it's creative. I've battled with my mental health for years with sort of OCD and intrusive thoughts. And I found that being creative has really helped that because it's just given me, I'm present. My, my mind struggles when it's not present. So mm -hmm. podcasting or this plus Brazilian Jiu Jitsu are the two things that I have found really just get my mind in a place where it's not obsessing about something fictitious. That's great that you're, yeah, that's great you're aware of that and, and you, you, you found those tools. We, we still know so little about it, but the people who suffer with depression or anxiety or ADHD, it can be terrifying. My mind can be the scariest place in the world. I used to work for the seafront office, I used to manage the lifeguard service. I often had to do quite intense things. I, I, I had to help emergency services with DPR and you know, life and death things. And that never phased me. And I think it was because I often live in a fairly heightened state. Ask me to lock the door and leave the house. I'll really struggle with that. Ask me to go in and pull someone out the sea and then do CPR on them. I'll be okay. It's really odd. That makes no sense yeah. to me. It's like, if you get used to living in the trenches, you, you become a yeah, lot more rather resilient. Than, yeah, I think so too. And, and a lot of it is uh, the thought process that goes through that. Why are you so comfortable dragging someone out of the ocean and, and giving them CPR? You get a feeling like that gives you a feeling when you do that. And so what is that feeling? And so it's probably exhilaration and proud that you can help someone. And what is the feeling you get when you want to leave the house and lock the door? It could be like a little bit apprehensive or, yeah. you know, overwhelmed of what's to come. It's leaning into other being led by the power of like connection to other people and, and love and appreciation of people. And I think it weirdly it's both my fear of leaving the house is a fear of responsibility, but in the same way, if I'm seeing someone in a life and death situation, I, in my mind, I have a responsibility, but it empowers me as opposed to scares. It's really odd. It's a, a bit of a paradox. It's, it's all about the, it's all about the feelings that you get. So if you can adjust the thought, so if you're, when you're leaving the house, for instance, if you have a thought, I'm going to go, and I'm going to help somebody today. Like I'm going to go and be a part of the community and help somebody, no matter what it is, what I'm doing was going to be helping people. And that's what I do when I leave the house. That's what I do. So if you have like that thought, that might make you feel a little bit better about. Yeah. I like that. And lock them in the door. Yeah. Very selfishly with the podcast. The thing I love about it is a, I know that I'm talking to really interesting people. But I also very selfish, like, I just totally got something from that myself. And I never thought of it like that, actually. And that is a really good way of turning around and going, leave the house because you've got to go out and be something positive. It's just like saving people out of the water, but you might save somebody from crossing the street and getting hit by a taxi or something. Yeah. You know? I really hope you got something this podcast. I've also created a stress management course for parents. If you'd like completely free access to it, just go to my website, www.dadmindmatters.com.
The only downside that in order to do so, you need to join our mailing list and I might try and sing you a ukulele song on your birthday. If you like what I'm trying to do to support other parents, please share it with someone and maybe even think about subscribing. Worst case scenario, if I start annoying you after a month, you can always unsubscribe. That's what I did. All right, wherever you're in the world, you're okay. Take care. Hey, Dad, here's a word from our sponsor. Do you miss having something interesting to read in those very odd five-minute breaks from the trench warfare that can be family life? If so, check out www.swifthalf.com. Sign up to their newsletter for jaw-dropping news, some light-hearted nonsense, exclusive offers and guides.